Night Beat. Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the Night Beat for the Chicago Star. Stories start in many different ways. This one began when I bumped into a little old man who claimed he was dead and proved it. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. My job is to prowl Chicago at night looking for that ever-loving story that's always out there in the darkness waiting for me. But, like most working stiffs, one day a week, I'm a free man. And this was that day. It was one of those hot spring days that come at you out of nowhere. Hot like only Chicago and one other place can get. I woke up late in the afternoon and went outside for a breath of humidity. I opened my collar and rolled up my sleeves. Man, it was sizzling. There was a little park ahead. I was just going to stretch out on the grass when I saw him. My first thought was, pass the salt tablets quick. The sun's got me and I'm seeing things. But no, he was real, all right. Sitting on a park bench on this boiling day, a fat old guy in a heavy overcoat with muffler, galoshes, and gloves. I went over to him. He looked up and smiled. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Sit down. Sit down. You look tired. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Nothing is worth getting tired for. Man is here for such a little while. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, forgive me for bringing this up, but I, I think it's only fair to tell you, at this moment, the temperature in the city is pretty close to 100 degrees. Oh, is that so? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the two cents I trade everything I'm wearing for one heart shafter in Mark's fig leaf. You are lucky, young man. To feel the good sun, yes, that is something fine. As for me, I am chilled to the bone. In that overcoat and that muffler? Yes. <laughs> How could any living thing be cold on a day like this? Mm, I suppose that is just it. What? I'm not a living thing. No, I'm afraid I'm quite dead. I think I'll walk around a bit. Goodbye. Uh, say, say. Mm? I, uh... I suppose I'm just inquisitive, but uh, you see, that's my business. I'm a newspaper man. Oh, yes. An honorable profession. Oh, thank you. Uh, just uh, why do you think you're dead? Think? So you don't believe me either. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's silly, isn't it? Uh, when did you die? I, the funeral was last week. A very nice funeral. I regret only that there were no plumed horses. Plumed horses? Uh -huh. In the old country, that was a requirement for the head of a family. But in America, of course, such customs seem foolish. Uh, yeah, yeah, foolish. Mm -hmm. yeah, you still don't believe me? Well, let's say that I'm just an old skeptic. All right, young man. To doubt everything in this life is to miss so much of life's true magnificence. You need a lesson. Uh, come with me. So I went with him, this strange man so comfortable in an overcoat on this oppressive day. We stopped at the first large office building and went into the lobby. The old man took me to the directory on the wall. Can you find the name of a doctor? A doctor? Why do you want a doctor? Oh, you will see. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, yes, there's a Dr. E.M. Herrick, suite 706. Is he good? I don't know. He's the only one listed. Uh-huh. He doesn't have to be too good. Come on. The receptionist in the doctor's suite eyed us quite distastefully, but in a reasonable time, we were ushered into Dr. Herrick's presence. He was a nice little fella, but the sight of the old man seemed to confuse him. Now, uh, just what seems to be the trouble, Mr. Uh, uh... Henry Kazarian. Yes. Well, I want you to examine me and tell the newspaper man what you find. Newspaper man? Well, I'm afraid I don't understand. And I'm afraid I can't help you, Doc. Why not uh, examine him and let it go, then? Yes. Please do. But uh, what seems to be the trouble with you? Uh, what are your symptoms? Uh, my symptoms were discovering the world no longer needed me. 
That can be very painful. Oh, but this isn't anything to oh, worry. come on, Doc, will you? It's my day off. Let's get it over with. Hmm? All right. Now, Mr. Kazarian, uh, take off your overcoat and shirt. The old guy undressed to the waist. His skin looked yellow and faded, but I figured that could happen to anyone his age. The doctor smiled, fastened his stethoscope to his ears, and began his examination. I put a cigarette in my mouth, but... I never lit that cigarette. I was watching the doctor. I was watching the color drain from his face. I was watching his fingers start shaking like he was trying to make nine the hard way. The doctor touched the stethoscope to a dozen parts of the old man's chest. Now he looked up, and it seemed to me, in those few seconds, he'd aged ten years. Mr. Kazarian, I... I want you to wait in the next room. Uh Uh-huh. Now, what did you find, doctor? I'm sure the newspaper men would be most interested. I told... I told you to wait in the next room. Take your coat and shirt. I'll be right with you. Yes, all right. Thank you very much. Goodbye. I can't believe it. It's impossible. It's a trick, a hypnotic trick. No. No, no, that's not true. Oh, you're not going to tell me that that old man is really... Not the slightest heartbeat. What? No cardiovascular reaction whatsoever. That man is... He... Oh, no, this is crazy. Maybe it's your stethoscope. Maybe it's on the bum or something. No, no, that's not the answer. Then what is the answer? Are you trying to tell me that that guy is really dead? Let's get him back in here. Let's talk to him. Yes, yes, by all means. He's gone. But how? This door leads into the hall. He's not in the hall. You're not going to print this in the paper, are you? Print it? How could I? The city editor would fire me so fast my head would spin. He'd say I was dead drunk. But if you were to confirm... No. What? Never. If you or your editor or anyone else ever calls me about this, I'll swear I never saw you or the old man before in all my life. I have to protect my reputation. Uh, You can understand that, can't you? Understand? At this point, I understand very little, Herr Doctor. After I left the doctor's office, I looked around the building for the old man. He was gone, all right, but his memory lingered on. Who was fooling who? I went into a phone booth and called the medical association to ask about the professional standing of Dr. Herrick. A nasal-voiced young woman informed me that Dr. Herrick was one of the most able physicians in the city. And her manner indicated that I should have had my mouth washed out with soap for even asking. After that, I looked up the name Kazarian in the phone book. It was there, Henry Kazarian, 612 Post Street. I telephoned, but the line was busy, so I hopped into a cab and took a ride out. It was a neat little white bungalow, but all the shades were down. I rang the bell for a long time before the door opened. Yes? What is it? I'd like to talk to Henry Kazarian. Who? Henry Kazarian. Henry? Oh, what's wrong? You have... You have not heard about my Henry. Hmm? He is dead. But, lady... We buried him two days ago. But that can't be. I can't believe it myself. It seemed like I suddenly wake up and there will be Henry saying, All right, Mama, get up. Get up, you're lazy enough for three wives. Uh, He was buried two days ago? Yeah, from Carell's Temple of Rest. A very wonderful service. All that was lacking was the plumed horses. The plumed horses? Mm, Papa, you would have been so mad if he knew there was no plumed horses. Uh, Yes, he certainly was. I mean that... uh... Mrs. Kazarian, I'd like to talk to you. May we go inside? No, but... We are in mourning. If you want to know about the funeral, talk to Mr. Carell. Yes, I buried Mr. Kazarian. Why do you ask? Why, for the very trivial reason, Mr. Carell, that I spent the afternoon with him. Uh, uh, I'm a very busy man, Mr. Stone, very busy. You think I'm crazy, huh? Well, I never saw Kazarian in my life, but here's how he looked to me this afternoon. A short, fat guy, about 65. Looks like he ate 
too much good food all his life. A mustache that just about drooped down to his chin. You look a little pale, Mr. Carell. You uh, saw his picture somewhere? No. I tell you, he's alive. I even went with him to a doctor. Oh, really? Well, my goodness. And what did the doctor say? He, uh... Yes, <sighs> Mr. Stone? All right. Where is he buried? At a cemetery at the edge of the city. Uh, I've got to go there on, uh, well, another matter if you care to come along. Yes, indeed I would, Mr. Carell. Indeed I would. Uh, right here, Mr. Stone, this mound. You see, the earth is very fresh and the flowers have hardly wilted. But listen, Mr. Carell, it can't be him. Mr. Stone, the only reason I'm doing this is to avoid any stupid sensational publicity. Carell's Temple of Rest is one of the most highly respected... Yes, yes, and Dr. Herrick is one of the most highly respected doctors, and Mrs. Kazarian is a grieving widow. There's got to be a logical answer to this. There's just got to be. You are listening to Nightbeat... Starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. When the undertaker brought me back to town, I called an insurance clearinghouse to find out if anyone had cashed in a policy on Mr. Kazarian. No, Mr. Kazarian didn't carry any insurance, so that wasn't the answer. I was beginning to get a little panicky. It was after six o'clock and I wasn't a bit hungry. I started walking home to see if I could figure out one thing in all that happened that made even a little sense. (laughs) Best I could come up with was that everybody was right, that Kazarian really was dead. I was too, and I didn't know it yet. I, uh, as I laughed a great deal at that. But just the same, I weighed myself on the first penny scale I passed, and I looked at my tongue in the little mirror. I was just a couple of blocks away from home, and I felt somebody tugging at my sleeve. Mister, Mm -hmm. what's the matter? You hot or something? What are you talking about? Somebody's following you. Following me? An old guy wearing an overcoat? No, a young fella. Don't look back yet, but he's wearing a blue sport jacket and he's built like an aircraft carrier. How long has he been following me? For the last few blocks. All right. Here. Uh, Take this and then get lost. Sure. Thanks, mister. I figured you ought to know. I kept walking along. And after a while, I spotted his reflection. If only one quarter of those shoulders and that blue sport jacket were really his, I was in trouble. I stopped to light a cigarette. He stopped to tie his shoelace. I wiped the perspiration off my face. He smiled. No, he wasn't following me. It's just my imagination. I turned down a quiet street a few blocks from my rooming house. I looked back. Nobody. I found it was much easier to breathe. And then up ahead of me, somebody was waiting at the corner. Yup, shoulders. He'd circled around the other side of the block. Oh, great. I started walking past him like he wasn't even there. Mister. Ah, let me say it just once. Uh, sure. Lay off. Fine. Goodbye now. I mean it. Lay off. Uh-uh. Now you've said it twice. Leave it alone. It's none of your business. I presume we're both talking about the same thing. The little man who wasn't there, Kazarian. What's the story on this guy? What's the gimmick? How can he be dead and buried? Mister, I ask you real nice and polite. Yeah, I know. Emily Post couldn't have done it better. But still, I'm going to find out. You're not going to find anything. (laughs) You're not going to find a thing. After a while, I started climbing out of the fog. And the way I felt, I wanted to climb right back in. All I had to worry about was history's most promising headache. It was after 9 o'clock when I got to my room... I took a couple of aspirins, flopped across the bed, and tried to relax. Only the street lamp kept shining in my eyes. I got up to pull down the shade. Then I saw the gray sedan parked across the street. Three guys piled out, and they started toward the rooming house. And leading the way was my old pal Shoulders, back for an encore. I headed for the back stairs. I went across a couple of backyards, came out on a side street, and now I was starting to get sore. I found a taxi and headed back for Kazarian's house. Taxi let me out about half a block down the street. Kazarian's house was all dark except for a tiny window in back. I went around to the window and looked in. And there was the old man. He was sitting in a leather chair, smoking a pipe. I tapped on the window. He turned, recognized me, and smiled. And someone out in front of the house spotted me. There he is! Where? Where? 
around. I started running toward the backyard. They were right on my tail. I came to a fence. I found the gate. It was locked. Shoulders, who was heading the pack, was the first to reach me. You just won't stop, will you, Mr. Snoop? No, I just not. I tore away from him. Ran down the length of the backyard fence, tried to find an opening. The others were coming up fast. I told myself I could never jump over that fence, but with those guys closing in, I was a hard man to convince. And the next thing I knew, I was crouching behind a couple of garbage cans in the alley. And I thought, what a fine way to die, behind a garbage can, my lifeblood draining out on some old melon rinds. He couldn't have gotten away. He must have. I told you to stop him. And then the footsteps passed me. My heart decided it was okay to start beating again. And then I went back to the house, and I found the old man's window. It was dark now, like the rest of the house, but the window was open a few inches. I started pushing it up some more. Who is that? It's me, Randy Stone. I'm coming in. I would not advise that young man. Really, it is quite foolish. Yeah, nobody knows that better than I. I'd appreciate it if you didn't call for help. Why should I? Hmm. Where's the light switch? Oh, yeah. I see you're not wearing your overcoat now, nor your gloves. You're not so cold now, huh? No. Isn't that strange here in the house? I, I do not feel it nearly so much. Yeah, that is funny. Why, why are you coming toward me like that? I want to shake your hand, Mr. Kazarian, just a gesture of friendliness. But somehow you do not look at all friendly. Your hand. Surely. I thought so. It's as warm as mine. Very nice pulse, too. What's the story, Mr. Kazarian? Oh, you are mistaken, young man. I am dead. How were you able to fool that doctor? Why did the undertaker swear he buried you? Why is your wife in mourning? Why was I slugged? But these are questions I cannot answer. I, I'm an old man, and I'm very tired. Would you say I was impolite if I asked you to leave? Oh, sure, I'll leave. Would you say I was impolite if I asked you where I could find the nearest police station? Because that's where I'm going. You're not going anywhere, Stone. Papa, I told you to holler for us if he bothered you. I knew there would be trouble. I just knew it. Dr. Herrick. Life is full of trouble. Death is endless peace. If this gets in the paper, it'll be the end of everything. Oh, and Mr. Carell of the Temple of Rest. What a spot for a chorus of all Lang Syne. You keep real quiet, Stone. Oh, that's a deal, Shoulders. Well, I wish you would all leave. In my lifetime, I saw none of you. Now that I am dead, you crowd around me like vultures. Yes, Papa, we leave just so you shouldn't get excited, Gomboys. Well, Gumboys. leave me in peace, huh? Leave me in peace. Oh. Papa likes to sit by himself sometime. George, you stop looking so tough. Nobody's afraid of you. Peter, why you just stand here and all? Go to the kitchen, put up hot water for tea. Yes, Mama. Mama? Carell, you call her mama? Of course, sir. Uh... Go to the kitchen, Pedro. All of you, go. I, I will explain to the young man. Perhaps I should do it, mama. Mama, again, you too, Dr. Herrick? Yes, No, I... no, I, I explain, Arman. You only use big doctor words. Nobody understand. Now, all of you, go. I said go to the kitchen. Uh... And, uh, George, the bread box is some baklava you serve with the tea. Yes, mama. Mama, mama, mama. And you... Young man, you come in here, into the parlor. Yes, Mama. And we will close the door. Now I... I will tell you everything. So they're your sons? Yeah, yeah. Well, fine, boys. Your papa and I, we would have liked at least one girl. A doctor and the undertaker. Now it begins to make sense, but... But their names... For their work. They said they need American names. The whole country to name Caseria. Ah, young man, young man. That was a name. It meant something. But here it's got to be Corell and Herrick, hmm? Tell me uh, about Papa. Yeah, excuse me. 1910, Papa and me and the kids, we come to America. Even though an old country, Papa's head of whole Kassarian clan, we come. So kids go to school. Become more than gold herders, rug merchants. And they do... Uh, my boys do. But they marry, they drift away. Soon, Papa and I are alone. 
And if the kids come over once every two months to see Papa, we think we are lucky. Imagine that, Papa Kasarian head of whole family. And then last week, it start with Papa. I heard alarm clock go off. And I got up like I always do, sleepy thinking. All country exists for so many thousand years without alarm clocks. Why we need, huh? Why I shut alarm clock off? Papa, Papa. Papa, where are you? I hurried to the house, and I found him in the kitchen, sitting at the table in overcoat. Papa, so here you are. You feel all right. Huh? Um, for a dead man, I feel all right. For a dead man, you should not talk like that, Papa. You got many years um, ahead of you. I got eternity ahead of me. I call my sons. I tell them. Papa is dead. You feel sick. Huh? I call Armani's fine doctor. No, woman, listen to me. I am not sick. No. I am dead. Do not call Armand the fine doctor. I call my son Peter, the fine undertaker. No. You do as I say. Tell them Papa is dead. Papa, this is nonsense. I've given you a complete examination. You're not dead. You're in perfect health. You, I do not need any more. Paper, you give me a good funeral. I want plumed horses. Papa, don't talk like that. You don't need any funeral. What am I to do? Just sit here? A dead man? Oh, you see, boys, you see how it is. Eh? Sometimes happens in a man of his age. Mm. Might be only temporary. I think we should put him in a sanitarium. No! Huh? Are you forgetting who Papa is, the head of whole family? But Mama, in his present condition... All through the old country, here in America, everywhere, the Akasarians, he's the head. Oh, just think what happened if they heard Papa had, had, had gone crazy. Well, we could keep it quiet, Mama. No, 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 news get out somewhere. It would be the end of everything. But Mama... No, wait, I, I, I'm, I'm, Mama's right. I've been thinking of something else. Yes? What about us, you and me? We've got our careers to think of. But I told you, these things are only temporary. All the more reason for not putting Papa away. If it's only temporary, then why can't we care from here? Well, I... I suppose we could. Papa? Where are you going? Where can the dead man go? To walk the streets? Uh, don't let him out. Uh, humor him. Do, do something, Arma. Papa, I, I don't think you'd better go out. After all, maybe... Maybe you really are dead, like you say. And in that case... Uh, Papa, I I'll give you a wonderful funeral. Uh, You'll see the best in town. With plumed horses? Yes, Papa, plumed horses, if you'll only do what we tell you. And stay in the house. Mama Kazarian didn't have to tell me anymore. They humored Papa so that he'd stay in the house, hoping his madness would pass and his family and the rest of the clan would not be disgraced. But one morning he escaped, and that's when I met him. When he took me to his son, Dr. Herrick, and told him I was a newspaper man, the doc thought everything was about to fall apart, so he went along with Papa's madness. And so did Carell and the others. That's why I was followed. That's why shoulders slugged me. That's why they all came to my room later to try to talk to me. I promised to keep their confidence, ate some of Mama's cookies, shook hands all around, and left. But as I was walking through the yard toward the street, a window opened. Young man? Hmm? Come over here, over to the window. Oh, Mr. Kazarian. Okay, sure. If you keep your voice down, I don't want them to hear. Hmm? Hmm? But you are a nice young man. I feel in you uh, an understanding. That is why I talk to you in the park. That is why I talk to you now. What do you mean? They tell you now, huh? How you say I am uh, cracked in the head, hmm? Insane. Because I say I am dead. Uh, maybe so, but let me tell you this. For 22 years, while I was not dead, and while I was sane, I worked 12, 14 hours a day. I never saw the sun. I never had time to think. They remember the old days. Only working, work, work. 
Then my boys left me. And even my name they don't want. The name Kazarian. And then Mama and me was, was left alone. Yeah, that, that was the way it was when I was sane and alive. So, so, one morning I wake up and I say, Okay, if that is how it is when I'm alive, I no longer wish to be alive. I am dead. Now, my sons come fast, I tell you. They say, no, no, he is not dead. He is insane. All right, I, I am too old to argue. Hmm? But now that I am insane, and no longer lift even this little finger. No work. <laughs> no worry. And my boys stay with us constantly, like like the old days. <laughs> I, I, I snap my fingers and they shiver. Yeah, today, I think maybe Armand is getting too smart again, so I bring you to his office. Did you see what happens? Did <laughs> you see what happened? <laughs> well, you old faker. <laughs> so, uh, what do you say I should do? <laughs> should I call the bin and say... Okay, I am not dead. I'm alive. And give up everything I got now? So they can say I am sane again? Well, should I, young man? Eh? Hmm? Should I? <laughs> oh, Papa, if you did that, that would only prove one thing. Hmm. And what is that? Well, if you called them in and told them the truth, you'd be the craziest man alive. <laughs> this and a moral, too, huh? All right, I'll give you a moral. All Papa Kazarian wanted was not to be left out in the cold. I guess maybe that's just about what all of us want, to be needed by somebody, to be loved by somebody. And why not? Is that such a big deal? In all this cockeyed, crazy world, what else do any of us ever really have except each other? Copy by... Oh... No, what am I saying? Copy boy. This was my day off. Remember? Night Beat, a new dramatic series stars Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Night Beat is written and edited by Larry Marcus and directed by Warren Lewis. Music is by Frank Worth. Papa was played by Ben Wright. Betty Lou Gerson played Mama. Others in tonight's cast were Jeff Corey, Lou Krugman, and Paul Duboff. Frank Lovejoy will next be seen in Milton Sperling's production, Rock Bottom, released by Warner Brothers. Listen next week at this same time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. The stories that come out of the shadows to find their way into Night Beat. March is Red Cross Month. One of the most important of the many services performed by the Red Cross is its aid to our armed forces. In this country and overseas, in military hospitals, Red Cross workers, aided by thousands of volunteers, play an increasingly vital part in meeting the needs of the patient. Remember, your contribution to the Red Cross will help the men in whose hands our nation's security may rest. There's more great action-packed entertainment for you throughout the week on NBC. Other mystery adventure programs include such popular shows as Dragnet, High Adventure, and Christopher London. Now, stay tuned for Brian Donlevy as a soldier of fortune on Dangerous Assignment on NBC.